we're there. Boom. Welcome, everyone. Hey. This goes Virtual Kitchen. There we go, Scott. Your first show, buddy. Thanks. Uh, first time guest, long time fan. Been watching for a couple of years, Jay. So thanks for having me on. I, know, right? I can't believe people say that now. It's been like a couple of years since we've been doing this, but uh, I'm super stoked to have you on the show today. But before we get started, I always got to get used to this is everyone, please subscribe and follow. You have to do that, I guess, when you do these things. Subscribe and follow to the SVK Network. We are the only live daily food service show anywhere on this planet. And I don't know if that's a good thing or if we're crazy. Well, there's just so much amazing content out there to bring the industry. So we're the only show live uh, Monday to Friday. And then on Fridays, the odd day, we do three shows. Like Scott's like, why are you doing three shows on Fridays? Because we're crazy. But there's just so much amazing content out there to provide to you, right? So Scott Moore, who are you, first of all, before we go to a commercial as we do our intro here? Yep. Tell us a little bit about you before we get started in uh, Sir Communications. Uh, Jay, I'm a foodie, as we talked about. I've basically lived the world of food service and have the passion for it since the days I actually worked at the original Kelsey's in Oakville. I'm dating myself, but in the early 80s, I became a bartender and met the founder, Paul Jeffrey. And from that day on, I think my life changed because this business has so much passion. It has so much life to it that I just fell in love with it. And subsequently, to make a long story short, over 20 years of my career with Kelsey's, uh, most notably as the director of marketing for Kelsey's Montana's and Outback. And subsequently, because of that, I always felt there was a need that the restaurant industry, both supplier and the operator, needed an agency that really understood the business, really understood what happens within the four walls. And at the end of it, I call it entertainment. It's developing a program, a menu, uh, a concept that attracts the customer again and creates loyalty so that's what uh, i do and that's what stir is all about i love the fact when we first met that i told you that at cisco i had created a, a program called stir which is kind of crazy that's right yeah yeah we have this we had the same program here at cisco and something like that called stir so that's where we called our stir stood for which hopefully it's not the same as yours because then that's really freaky but ours stood for success through innovative resources is that we ours was stood for? Yeah, I wasn't really looking for an acronym. I was looking for <laughs> something that um, was about the industry. Obviously, we know in 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 the kitchen you're stirring, or in, at the bar you're stirring something. And when you stir yeah. something, something happens. There's an activity. There's an emotion. There's a result. So it kind yeah. of walks down both paths, both the restaurant side and shall we say the marketing side, and that's what we're all about. I love that. See, it's it's a good name. It's a great name. It's approved. Yeah, it worked. It's easy to remember. It Stir. It works. It works. Awesome. Well, we're going to get down into restaurant marketing because we got the, the professional on here to provide so much great information to you guys out there, what's happening in the industry. So we're going to come back right after this quick message and uh, we'll chat with Scott more. Scott, right, we'll be right back. There we go. Imagine both your front and back of house teams are so well trained that they're executing flawlessly. Your front of house is doubling your sales, boosting repeat business, and creating five-star dining experiences, while your back of house is consistently preparing each dish to perfection, on time and to spec. Having a restaurant this dialed takes a unique training system. That's where Serve comes in. Serve means study restaurant variety, and it is a powerful mobile training system, custom built to meet the needs of your restaurant. Serve will up-level your team's knowledge and skills, maximize your profits, and create experiences guests will rave about. Serve is the key to unlocking your restaurant's hidden potential and will prove that the more your team is able to learn, the more your restaurant will earn. It's Serve, and it's a game changer. Ready to serve? Get started at servenow.com. All right, welcome everyone back to SVK Network. S Scott, let's, I guess, <laughs> Scott, Jesus, way too much coffee today. It's going to be a hard show, buddy. Anyways, <laughs> let, let's get into right now, the whole thing that you always talk about a lot about is really around, you got to define who you are first as yeah. a restaurant. Let's talk about that first. Let's get into that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think uh, in many ways, there's a statement that says, if you try to be everything to everybody, you are nothing to nobody. 
And I've seen it in the past and I still see it today with the, the way the market is, the conditions. Restaurants are trying to grab everyone and everything to try and grow sales. And that is the biggest mistake they can make. Um, every successful brand, restaurant service out there understands who they are and what they go after. So defining who you are is critical because that essentially drives uh, what you do, your menu, your type of service, your environment, uh, and how you market and promote the restaurant itself. So Scott, is that same as defining your brand? Yeah, but it's. I think everything is predicated on the customer, Jay. Um, okay. there's no sense developing a brand new burger spice or a pizza if there's nowhere for it to go or it does not have the customer appeal. So I'm always thinking of customer first and that's part of our strategy is customer first thinking. So when you're developing a brand, we either be a new brand, a restaurant, an independent or a chain or existing, you have to have that core customer in mind. I call it the, the most MVC, the most valuable customer, because those are the people that will keep coming back because they love what you do and they will always, always be loyal. Do you find restaurants now kind of try to be, or they still are uh, trying to be everything to everyone all the time? Or do you see this model changing now? And that used to be the old. Well, way? great question. Um, I think COVID has forced Force may not be the right word, but it has dictated to say we've got a finite who we are. And what I mean by that is first and foremost on the menu. You know, when I was at Kelsey, we had 60, 70 items on the menu because we mm. tried to appeal to everybody and everyone. But I think COVID and we know the cost of doing business, the food costs, the labor shortages, you name it. I think restaurants now have to really finesse their menu. Mm -hmm. um, they have to f understand truly who they are um, in order to. Uh, really attract that core customer. And there was an example, there was an ethnic restaurant um, that I'm aware of that if I said, um, tell me about a traditional menu that they would have, um, guess what they have on their menu, Jay? They have a burger, it was Pizza? crispy chicken sandwich, Pizza? And a fish sandwich and French fries. And it has nothing to do with the ethnicity. So there is a prime example of what not to do. There is a prime example of trying to be a catch-all, do whatever they can to drive customers. And in fact, what they're doing, they're diluting their brand, they're distressing their brand and doing more damage than good. So I want to talk more about that because I think that's a really good point, Scott, is the diluting of brands. Yeah. Can you give some more examples around that? Because I think that's important because I think I see it all the time. Uh, yeah. Um, as far as diluting, there's, there's, um, as I said earlier, Jay, there are more that are going the opposite way and, and finiting who they are. Mm -hmm. There are chains like, uh, Chipotle, the keg, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, even Swiss chalet to a point here in Canada and the keg that truly understand who they are and they yeah. develop recipes. They develop their concepts based on who they are, they stay in the lane and that's why they're so, so successful. Do you, is it, is it, do you have to review that every year? Like when you're looking at that, like, is that something you recommend every year, every month? Like what's the well, time frame? Well, doing I think, that? yeah, the industry is evolving so quickly and always have, if you don't evolve, you're going to dissolve in, in a sense. And I think you're always dissolve. looking okay. at like what is, happening in the market in general so there are trends like the crispy chicken sandwich that maybe it fits within your your brand and you bring that into and maybe put a twist on it um but yeah you should always evolve even with kelsey's we went through the whole transition from being yeah. a you know a bar serving young uh you know young uh demographic to that demographic had now grown up they have family so it's evolving so i think brands should always evolve but they should always stay in that lane that they're known for and uh, and has always driven that uh, sales and that loyal customer. Now, what happens if you come out of your lane? Because I see that once in a while. Can you get well, back in your lane or do you have people that can work with you like yourselves well, that do well, reviews of that? Okay. Yeah, we can help in that case. But I think if you get out of your lane, you're, you're doing, as I said earlier, more damage. Again, you know, some restaurateurs, because they're desperate for sales, are looking for that shiny new object. And let's do okay, that. That happens. That happens like on the hour. It's yeah. Kind of, and, and every restaurant is looking for that goal. That you you have to, you just have to be disciplined to truly say, this is who we are because essentially 
who you are, who your core customer is, Jay, is your mm -hmm. filter to do everything. So if you see that shiny object, that chick, that crispy chicken sandwich, if you put it through the filter and the filter goes, no, it's not going to work. You don't go there because that's not who you are. That's not why mm -hmm. customers visit you. You have to be very specific who you are, know who you are and who you're going after. Now, when you open a restaurant, you go through that at the beginning. You got to go through that and define yeah. yourself. Yeah. Is there some, is there any tactics to define that? Like, do you do like a roadmap or a, a spider web? Well, if you're if you're starting with a new concept, first you got to understand. Okay, what do we want to do? What do we want to develop? What do we want to be? What genre are you going to be? Food? You know, you're going to be QSR, fast casual, fine dining. Are you going to be ethnic, like Italian or Vietnamese? Whatever the case may be. So once you understand that is. You know, you want to understand what sandbox you're playing in. Then mm -hmm. now you drill deeper down and then a lot of it filters through and, and ends up being talking about location. So we want to be an Italian restaurant. Where do, what town do we want to be in? I live in Burlington. Let's say we want to open a town in Bur a restaurant, an Italian restaurant in Burlington. Does that fit? Is there a need for another Italian restaurant in mm -hmm. Burlington? If you have a niche or you think you can do it better than and find the location, which is ultimately critical as well, then move forward. Now, you said niche. <laughs> I I find that are the niches, and I can say this weirdly. Apologize. Is the niches running out? Like, are we are we done with reinventing the niche or looking at different things? Like, I'm seeing the Dumpling House down in New York just rocking it down there. Yeah. By the way, he's got to come on the show. But um, down there, the Dumpling. Uh, Brooklyn Dumpling is just killing it. So is there, are we running out of the niches or is there lots of room still? No, I think the world's getting smaller, Jay. And, yeah. Uh, with so much immigration in Canada, the world being smaller, there's still so many trends and tastes um, I have to agree uh, with you on that, that. that are coming in and becoming commonplace. So That's are we like running that. out of niches? No, I think, I think, again, we talked about the evolution and evolution will always drive niches and look for that opportunity is is what is new, what is interesting, and what can I bring into my restaurant that attracts that individual, but still, again, mm -hmm. stays within the sandbox that I play in. So pizza, chicken places, burger places, all that, we're going to see, we could possibly see this whole new, based on the ethnic diversity that we have coming into our country, we're going to see more of these places opening up that's really going to give, like you said, a whole new world to us, really. A oh, whole yeah. New way. Yep, definitely. Again, people are always looking for what's new, what's different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, if you live in a certain town, a certain area, there's only certain many restaurants to go. So if there is a new restaurant that comes into town that could be an ethnic or otherwise, yep. or a better burger joint, whatever that is, by mm -hmm. all means. Yeah, certainly. That's really cool. I like that. I, I love that because I think food is so, di like, it's diverse, but it, there's so much to unknown of the food. You know, I was teaching at a college the other day and I learned so much about just a couple of things that the students brought to me. That was completely different. Yeah. The industry has so much talent. Um, yeah. And so much passion, as I mentioned earlier, and so much drive for any industry to go through what the restaurant industry has gone through, not only through COVID and yeah. now again with labor costs, food costs, competition. And now we're sticking our toe into a recession, which is going to come full on before we know it the ingenuity and the drive and the passion is just incredible. And I think that is what keeps this industry moving forward. Mm -hmm. I think in some cases, if this hit other industries, don't know what, I think, I don't know if they'd still be around, but the passion, the soul, the drive, the intelligence and the perseverance of this industry is beyond many others. And that's again, why I love this industry so much. Yeah. And I love being part of it and supporting again, the restaurateurs and, and suppliers accordingly. Well, that's why I love having you on the show now, because you have the same passion I think we do here at Cisco for this industry as well as myself, is really that same kind of passion. It, it, you know what I love about it? And the craziest way I think of it, and I know this is going to be crazy, but COVID, when COVID hit, and I remember those first few months and stuff, yeah. and, 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 and the innovation in the meetings I had across this country with people trying to innovate to keep going and like it didn't take us out a lot of people thought okay it's we're we're we're, we're gone like or it's going to totally rip the industry apart it did yeah. but man did we bounce back 
the innovation, the ideas, people, I remember interviewing restaurants that opened up during the COVID, during COVID, opened up in, like in that moment, many <laughs> Crazy. of them. And to think about that, and to your point, how many other people are that crazy or passionate to get out there and, sh and you know, be a part of an industry that we all know has razor thin margins, that is difficult to, you know, yeah. continue to survive. Those are I incredible know. when you think of those people and you think about what they do. And yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, again, COVID uh, took out the weak. Uh, that's, yep. that's nature. Um, but the strong will always survive. And I think the stronger got even better. They and, did. And will continue to improve. So, again, I think the, the industry was a little stagnant, Jay, before COVID. You know, it was the same old, same old. And I think COVID woke the whole industry up from every aspect, from supplier to even the customer and, of course, the operator. What they do, how they do, what's on their menu. The whole bit, I think everybody looked at every stone and turned it over to say, what can we do better? What we can do um, different and what can we improve on? It's funny you say that. I think I did a show. I was doing an in-person show a month before COVID hit. And I looked at the slides the other day and it, I called it the shifting industry. And it was talking about that. There, there hadn't been a disruptor in the industry to create innovation or ideas. Sure. up to COVID. It was kind of getting a little, like you said, stale. There really wasn't that exciting. We had some, some trends coming through, you know, we had, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we had some, you know, trends associated to the economic times and stuff like that a few years prior to COVID. All those things were factoring, but there really wasn't anything new. And, and oh. we saw third party came in, but it was starting to be kind of quiet again. And, Things were starting to change. It was just really quiet. So I did a presentation. If I say that, it was called the shifting industry. Yep. <laughs> How to create change, I think it was the the motto. So I'm exactly on the same page as you on that. Totally agree. Yeah. So when we look at marketing and things like that and really mm -hmm. building the brand of who you are, what are some things that people have to watch out for? Because we always tell them what to do. I always ask, what, what do we watch out for? What do they got to be aware of? Well, I think you got to step back again, understand who you are, take it right back to the root of what your brand is, what you stand for, what you do, and then build it out from there. Uh, a plan from that, as I said, act as that filter. Um, and you got to look you at the competition. People, do right? you find people, um, does that mindset of opening a restaurant because I like to cook or someone said you should own a restaurant, is that gone or is that still around? I think it's <laughs> a lot more than I like to cook. <laughs> 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 I like to cook too, but I certainly wouldn't open a restaurant. I don't have that skill set, that that ability to run yeah. a restaurant. It is, it is as simple as it looks to serve a cold beer and a warm dish. It's the hardest thing to do, Jay. It is the hardest yeah. thing to do because it's not just one. You are counting the, from the hostess to the server, the bartender, mm -hmm. the runner, the kitchen staff, you name it, right down to the dishwasher to make yeah. that experience as well as you would want as if you did it yourself. So it's it's not an easy, it's not easy at all. And to do it again and again, every day, every night, you know, every week, it's it, they, they deserve a big round of applause. It's yeah, incredible what they do and how they do it. I agree, awesome. Well, we're gonna break for a quick commercial. Let's get back into what we're gonna talk about next. What do you want to get into next? Around this recession thing you kind of yeah, mentioned? Yeah, we, I don't we want to say the R word. We're going to no, well, actually... I think, I think we're getting there, so we can't shy away. We, we, we can't shy away, but we're not going to say the R word. Well, we, we've talked about the C word, and we got through that. <laughs> so I think the R word, will, we'll get through it. Again, this industry um, you know, has a lot of metal. But I want to talk, talk about it because if we do go into, let's call it a challenging time ahead, if we do. So you know, that's cool. Okay. Because we got through COVID, no problem. We can get through this, yep. but I want to talk about it because I find restaurants tend to pull back on marketing mm -hmm. when things get tougher. And I see some restaurants do the opposite. So I want your perspective sure. after this quick little commercial. Um, yep, what's, definitely. what's, what way do we go? What do we, what should we tell restaurants to do? Okay. Okay. So cool. Okay. Right back after sprouted lentil salad. Oh, commercial. Here we go. <laughs>
Awesome. Welcome everyone back to SVK Network. That guy right there on the screen, he is Scott Moore. Hey, legend right. in marketing, Mr. I don't know about <laughs> legend. Company, Stir Creative Communications. You st this is you started this company. How long ago? Was 13 years ago, Stir, but I've been in the food service industry for over 40. I swear to God, we did this the same time. We both came up with that word at the same time because mine's about 13 wow. years old, too. Isn't that crazy? Great minds think alike, Jay. I know. And then we're on a podcast like 13 years later. How crazy is that? Crazy. So crazy. Crazy world. But anyways, thank you again for joining us. Um, so pleasure. we were talking a little bit about this weird time that's ahead of us. People are saying the R word. We're not going to say the R word. But I want to talk about a little bit around your perspective. Should restaurants, okay, we're going in time. Things slow down in my restaurant come January. Mm -hmm. We obviously know it does that anyways. But it goes down and it's extra slow. Yeah. What, what recommendations, Scott, would you say the restaurants need to think about? Well, it's it's interesting. You sent me some shirts, and I chose the uh, the camo version because <laughs> we're going to war, right? We're going to war to win sales, win traffic, and yep. uh, uh, win loyal customers. And you know, the R word we either be January when sales are traditionally slow. Um, a lot of companies, a lot of brands, kind of say, "Woo, sales are slow, a recession hitting. Let's just walk everything down and stick Ooh. our heads in the sand and wait for the storm to blow over." And that's the exact opposite of what you should do. In my eyes, the pie is shrinking. In other words, consumer spending is decreasing. The times they're going out is decreasing. So that pie is shrinking. So I think now or at during that time, you have to do more. You have to yell louder than you ever did before. And you can do it very cost effectively and efficiently because, you know, the independent operator and even chains, again, it's all, you know, these things cost money, but you can yeah. do things very cost efficiently and effectively. And in some cases, you're not you're not increasing costs at all. What you're doing is using the existing platforms that you have from a social media perspective. You're using your staff and you're, you're leveraging your loyal customers to help you maintain your piece of the pie and maybe even grow it during a recession. Because I said many of your competitors will go quiet. So if you're yelling well, the loudest, guess where the customer well, is going to go? Can we jump on that for a second there, Scott, yeah. is the loyalty part. Mm -hmm. I saw a recent study that just came out this week on the loyalty, uh, restaurants having a loyalty, lo loyalty program and the impact that it's doing. It's very positive. Is that something oh, yeah. that you would consider restaurants really looking into more? Oh, yeah, definitely. There, you know, Again, there were those high-end, uh, well-strategic um, uh, developed strate uh, loyalty programs that one can purchase and leverage. Um, but there are simple things you can do. You know, you're thinking of independent. They wouldn't have the type of money and scope that, uh, you know, Recipe has or any of those big chains or monopolies have. So if you're an independent, you don't necessarily have to have a loyalty program per se. But what you could do is, again, ask your core customers. You know, the ones that are coming in the door once, twice mm -hmm. a week. Ask them if for their email. And then you build a database on that email. And what you do, Jay, is you just send out not overwhelm them, but maybe once, twice a week or every two weeks, send them a notification and say, hey, Jay, guess what? This Friday, we're having a burger and beer special. Come on in. So you mm -hmm. can make just aware of what's going on. You can say, hey, Jay, we have a new menu that we're featuring some things. Or you could say, hey, we're just uh, rewarding our loyal customers. Come on in on a special night and we're going to give you X. So Again, it doesn't have to be that high end with the back end, the whole loyalty program, which do work very well, obviously. Um, you can keep it quite simple and easy and manageable when you're an independent operator by just acquiring a, an email list uh, of, of your core customers and just keep yep. building on that uh, yeah. in that respect. That's something that you could get you know, a manager to, to, to handle as sure. well. Even, a, even a key staff member that, you know, yeah. is full time and perhaps is looking for something else to do that uh, she could get paid for other than, shall we say, serving or cooking. Yeah, yeah. The case may another be. incentive to take care of. And, and oh, yeah. we say that, that helps with uh, in good internal stuff as well. Yeah. yeah and, very good. So, yeah. And go again, sorry, Jay. And even on the social aspect, every restaurant, I would assume, has a Facebook page, Instagram, maybe TikTok. Just be constant in the communication there. You know, you've got to create the content. So even if it's a simple shot of your chef preparing a meal or a shot of the food or, or the experience in the restaurant, be consistent with that. 
as yeah. well. Um, because, you know, that garners people will, as we all know about social marketing, they'll, they like it or they'll pass it on to a friend of a friend. So keep that channel going steadily as well. But your most critical piece is, again, rewarding and keeping in touch with your loyal customers. So the other thing I want to mention, yeah, and I, I think that's so important. I got a rule of thumb right now, and I've been doing this, and I think I got it from Sean. And if Sean's watching or, or watch us later, out of Kelly Barbecue down in San Diego. Oh, right, um, yeah. So so Sean was on, I was at a conference with Sean the other right, yeah. day, mm-hmm. and Sean had a slide up there, and I did, I took a picture of it. Um, but it's something that I will always remember. One of the things I took away from him um, is that for your social channels, and this is for all the restaurant people out there, it's not necessary about the quality of your video or your ad that gives you the followership. So remember that you don't have to be perfect. No. Okay. And, and that's, that's perfect. Use your phone. I mean, you don't need a big fancy camera. You don't need to do all these things, but it's about, so it's not quantity will give you qual. I mean, quality will not give you the quantity and the followership as you may think. Now, what we've been teaching, I taught this at school the other day yeah. is that it's about the quantity consistency, like Scott said, equals quality. And that's how you get it, right? Yeah. Consistently putting stuff out there doesn't have to be perfect, but you're going to get the viewership on this. But doing it once a month ain't going to do it. And I think more repeatedly doing it and getting out there because it's a massive world to play in. Yeah. You you hit the nail on the head, Jay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think everybody knows that social marketing, you know, the lighting doesn't have to be perfect. You're not preparing and producing a 30 second TV commercial uh, or, or an online video. This is just a simple snapshot, maybe a snippet video uh, of something that's in your restaurant and just make sure the food looks good. The quality is decent. But again, don't worry about being perfect. Just get the message out there. Tell them what you are, who you are and why they should come and visit. And pictures can do that very well. Now, do you think video or pictures? What's your choice? Video is is uh, C3 g- gaining a lot more gravity and, and seems to work very well. So even just a 10 second video, as I said, that chef in the back preparing that meal or, yeah. you know, that beer being poured, whatever. There's some interesting things that you can video that work quite as well, but a combination of. Um, but yeah, video seems to be uh, generating a lot more uh, interest and, and uh, eyeballs, as it were. And here's the homework thing. I was telling Scott about this earlier is practice whoever's doing your videos or yourself practice doing a selfie video every day, do one or two a day. Cause it's, you'll get hang, you'll get used to it. You'll get that weirdness will go away and then boom, you'll become a next YouTube star. But I think it's, I think video to me speaks to the audience nowadays. And we see that with, with TikTok and we see that with reels and stuff on IG, mm-hmm. all these things. But I do believe the more that you get used to it, I would do, and I've seen this, there's some amazing restaurants in Winnipeg that do this. They'll do a video in the morning of yeah. their special and what they're doing. And to your point, they have an amazing followership on social that they've built, but they send that out and you want to go there for lunch. Like it's just like that. Like yeah. it's incredible. No, it is instant. Um, I agree. Social has taken over the world in some ways, but let's not forget about the traditional. Getting involved in your community, Jay. I know. Okay, let's talk about this. I've done that before. Great, but this is a great topic, Scott. This I'm glad you brought this up. This is a great one. Yeah, you know, again, it's great to have that online component, but you know, I call that kind of underground. It's it's all on your phone. What are you doing in your community? You know, are you a member of the Better Business Bureau? Um, there are many sports leagues that you can get involved with that sponsor. You could become uh, involved with a charity opportunity. So there are many ways to physically get out there, shake hands in your community, which also, again, you can add on to your loyalty program here. You've got your, your sponsor and social programs here. Mm-hmm. And then you've got your community outreach, as it were, to, to knock on doors, shake hands, and as they say, kiss babies. So don't forget about that piece as well, because that's very important to get to know that owner operator by his or her first name. Do you think that now I own a restaurant, let's like, you go inside and if you own a restaurant, you go inside. Yeah. How much is it? What? Because I hear this a lot. How important is the service towards your brand? You, one of the things you have in here in the questions to ask oh. you 
was what kind of service? Like, what, what, how much do you work on that nowadays that actually is attached to your marketing plan and what you're doing? Well, I think it's imperative. I think if you ask anybody if the service is poor, most likely they're not going back to a restaurant. So, you so know, it's, as, it's as good as the food has much, to be. Too many choices nowadays too, right, Scott? That if I don't like this place that I didn't get it good, I'll just yeah. go to the next one next door, yeah. right? No, service, service is imperative because, you know, bad food, maybe the chef's had a bad night, but they will correct it because a good server will correct that. They'll take care of that. Uh, I think gone are the days where servers are order takers. They have to become the, they are essentially the face of the business because they welcome you. They make sure you're taken care of. You know, Paul Jeffrey told me once, it's like hosting somebody at your house for dinner. How would you treat that person who you're serving at that table? Put it in the perspective at, at your house. You would make sure that their drinks are topped up. Their food is great. Uh, everything is detailed, the music, the light, everything. And you got to think of it that way because service is very difficult. Good service is very difficult to do, but it's the ones that do it well win. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. And it's not hard, right? There's some things you can do. There's amazing people out there to coach and help you in that space as well. Yeah, um, but definitely. Yeah, you. Staff training is critical. We've all talked about it. There are many things out there. Um that can help you with that. And maybe that could be part of our next show, Jay, not to say you're going to have me on again, but let's uh, <laughs> make some assumptions here. The next show. Can uh, be we'll we'll about, make that note. We'll, we will definitely have you on staff again. Motivation, um, developing staff, growing staff, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I think that one-to-one -one contact, that person represents that restaurant that night, that experience. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> I was like, that. Do, do, do the mics pick up a sneeze? Yes. Yes, or they do. Right? Said, you are so good looking, but <laughs> that was awesome. That was, okay, so last part before we wrap yeah. up today's show, I want Scott give me three things right now that restaurants need to focus on with what's coming up in January to continue to drive traffic in sales. Give us well, three. We're not going to say the R word, but if it gets tough through January and February, because well, I, I think a lot of them are probably in a probably like you said. The ones right now that went through the finance, you know, like, everyone's in a pickle in the financial side. There isn't a restaurant out there that doesn't want to make more money or has tons of money is that they need to, they're, they're looking at everything right now, cost, labor, business, everything. From a marketing side, three things they need to focus on because we want them busy January and February yep. and we need foot traffic. We need foot traffic. Well, yeah, again, first and foremost, double check you are who you are and what you're doing well and improve on that. And I think generating sales in January actually starts now. Um, because That's a good again, tip. That's a good tip. You need to be focusing right now in January, not Christmas, but January, right? You can't wait till the glass is half empty to start, start marketing. So continue to find, finesse who you are, improve on what you do is number one. Number two, uh, again, we talked about that loyal customer. Start developing that base if you haven't already. Start developing that email component or some type of communication with that loyal customer to drive them back. And then thirdly, I think we talked about it. Improve all aspects. In, in, in almost number one is staff service, um, style, personality, and uh, training. I think those are the three things. I think it's, uh, again, focusing and understanding who you are who your core customer is, and then delivering that experience in the restaurant with your server and the rest of the staff. Scott, what's your take on mystery shoppers? I think I think they work. I think they yeah. really do, again, because you have to get We haven't talked about them all. We haven't talked to them in three years. No. I was I used to do mystery shopping. Yeah, uh, we did them as well. Uh, when we were Kelsey's. I think that's a valuable tool. Uh, if somebody knows you're coming in, sure, they're going to make sure everything's great, right? But if they just think you're another guest, uh, that's where you get your honest uh, opinion, thoughts, and perspective on how they performed. And if you, and here's a tip, and I'm going to give this to everyone because I, my buddy's over at restaurantowner.com. Go over to restaurantowner.com. I think it's it's not very expensive to join. They have right. templates that you can give family and friends to do mystery shop or to fill it out. So you don't go in there with like oh. a weird biased opinion. Yep. Like you want to go in there with a, with what you're looking for. Right. So, you, so you go in and do that. Now I also have done mystery shoppers with people that you need to also to find what a 10 is for you and what a 10 is for them. <laughs> and, right. Because I also, I've also seen where people are like, 
your 10 is different than my 10. So we need to You're define right. what that is, right? So we need to make sure. But I've done enough mystery shoppers over the years, There's a ton of them that had a black, I've had many stories, trust me, uh, on them. But I do think it's important that you understand uh, mystery shoppers. There's programs out there, but you can go to restaurantowner.com, go there, join up. They have a, de- not to pitching Jim's program here, but you go over there. Uh, they have a template on there. Give yeah. that to people. Give that to family, friends. They're going to probably be light on you, but you might want to also see if there's programs or people out there. I know at Cisco, we've got people out here to do them that would be happy to help you in that space. But I think it's something you need to look at because they were they were kind of gone. Why I say this is I, I was just on TikTok or LinkedIn the other day, a, a company that was starting to do them again. And I know that they're out there. Uh, be careful. But do your homework. Um, but definitely look at a mystery shopper or getting some done because what you'll be surprised over the one, the hundreds I've done, what you'll find out through these different people. And that's your menu perception, your speed, your time, your, how nice is the serve, all those things you don't yep. necessarily will see. And those little improvements will make a big deal, huge deal in your business. And we don't have time to, I don't think though, I don't think consumers will give too many second chances nowadays, especially in the bigger centers when there's a uh, zillion restaurants. It's too expensive to go out and there's too many choices. And back to that secret shopper, um, you know, you said perspectives may be different, but I think when you gather them all in, you will hear a similar result. Yeah, there'll be a similar a threat, similar right? Result, right? Yeah. And that's, yeah, we all again, want good service. We all want to be taken care of. We all want to be heard. And we want to have a great meal that satisfies. Yeah. Right? Satisfies there, us. Right? There's going to be some generality, some commonalities yeah. that will either be very good, that you're doing very well, and then some will tick the box that hmm, needs some improvement. And uh, and that's what you focus on. You focus on the good as well. But where's an opportunity to improve? And those would be those. Last question. Yeah. <laughs> you look, I have a big TV in my studio. Last question. How important it is as a restaurant to tell your story to the public? Uh, how important? <laughs> how important? For this yeah, one. First um, of all, what is what is a restaurant story? Like, tell the story of a restaurant. Can you give us like Kelsey said a story? Yeah, you probably wrote it, <laughs> <laughs> right? A, a story is essentially telling the customer what you're all about. So if you had that 30 second elevator speech, as they call it, if you're the owner of an independent operator and you met somebody on the street and you said, yeah, I own a restaurant. Oh, tell me about it. Well, we're an Italian restaurant and our specialty is our yinoki. It's from my grandmother's recipe from the 30, you know, from 50 years ago. We haven't changed a thing, uh, you know, and we build a, uh, menus around that Italian experience with some great wine atmosphere with the authenticity of uh, the Italian genre. That's not very good how I said that, but I think you're getting a sense of it's telling that story of who you are in a very succinct manner uh, so that everybody gets it. And that's the message that is kind of your Bible to go forward with, with Mm -hmm. all communication. So as you go into January, make sure your story's nailed down. Yep. Your servers, your staff knows the story as well. Share the story so they get passionate behind why and who you are. And this could be, and I have to throw this out here too, Scott. I told you we could talk all day, buddy. Uh, is that it can, you don't need to be a 200-seat restaurant to have a story. You could be no. a five-seat restaurant. You could not even have a seat. and Just be a walk-up. Every yeah. location. Every size size does not matter in this case, no. Jay. <laughs> it, you know, it doesn't. It, it really doesn't. So we really need to make sure you have a story because I've seen uh, coffee places that will have a couple seats will have a story. And I, oh, I think yeah. QSRs, I think QSRs have a story. I even know some of the big franchise QSRs have stories nowadays. Everyone has a story. It's all the story that it, and they've got and the stories have to resonate. They have to be relevant. Yeah. And there, there's yeah. got to be soul and a personality. It just can't be a here's what we are on a piece of paper. You got to live and exactly. breathe. Exactly. And I think I think if you touch on some of those notes of sustainable practices that you're doing, include that in some of your notes of your story of what you're doing yep. to give back or do like you said, you know, what you're giving back to the community, what are you doing for the environment? Those things hit on those notes of the people that we were trying to attract in our restaurant, which are the millennials and Gen Zs. That's who we're going after for business right now. So let's connect. Yep. I yeah. agree. 100%. You think we're gonna talk all day. We could. 
good. That was, this was fun. Thank you so much it's for having fun. me on. No, thank you so much, Scott. Scott, where can they find out more on Stir Com- Creative Communications? Uh, website stircommunications.ca, and then you can link to our Instagram account. And I also have a, a LinkedIn profile as well. So um, that's how you can awesome. find we'll out more it. about me. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it on the bottom of the um, of the LinkedIn and on YouTube and stuff like that, and on Spotify where we host a lot of our shows yeah. and stuff like that as well. So we'll make sure you put it on there. And I'm sure you've got amazing stuff on there that will blow your mind. Um, but honestly, thanks so much, Scott. It's been an absolute pleasure learning. I have a passion for marketing, a passion for this industry. So it kind of goes hand in hand that we yeah. could talk all day. So no, Jay, thank you yeah. again. And Yo, no, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure, Jay. As I said, I've been a fan for a while and I've been a huge fan of the industry for 40 years. So having this opportunity just to, if anything, I say even a snippet helps out an operator or supplier or a staff person get better well then we've achieved what we wanted to do today exactly it's that easy right yeah it's a tough industry man i'm here to support help and i'm a big cheerleader (laughs) that's awesome well thanks so much scott everyone else what's happening this afternoon scott it's (laughs) show number three is friday this through five o'clock this afternoon eastern time we're back we're going to be dr ochre pizza they got these new pizzas god they're so good well, I'll be uh, at the so, bar at five o'clock, Jay, supporting my local. Exactly. <laughs> so if you're at a pub, if you're at a pub, watch this on your phone. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to be back at three p.m. Eastern time uh, later today to do no five o'clock Eastern time to do Chef Poyet's do Doctor Ricker pizzas. They're new pizzas. They're incredible. And then next week we're back all week with we have Chef Dan and Chef Peter going head to head on Monday. Wow. On a this or that show, which is going to be so cool. It's just, it's Saskatoon versus Winnipeg. So we have two chefs going to head to head, going to cook up some amazing nice. ideas on Monday. So anyways, tune in, subscribe, follow, do all that good stuff. We're the only food service live daily show there is anywhere on this planet. So thanks again, Scott, and to everyone else. Thanks, Get out there and support your restaurant. Yeah. Have a dinner Cheers tonight. Cheers to all, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.